Welcome back. Today we're going to learn about variants. And in case you haven't used variants till now, trust me, you're missing out a lot as they allow you to change the state of a button or anything in just like seconds. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through on how to create variants, how to structure them and how to use them in your designs. So without further ado, let's jump over to Figma and let's get started. Now, the idea behind creating variants is that what it does is that if you, for example, want to group multiple master components, what it will do, instead of actually having a master component and underneath you're going to have other master components, it will transform the master components that you're grouping into variants. So for example, these two are two master components. So we have the input field and the button that we created in the previous video. Now, if we select these two, we will see here on the right side that we have this option to combine as variants. So now if we hit this button, what Figma will do is it will group these two under a component, a new component, which we can rename as being, for example, a test, right? And inside those master components that we previously had are transformed into variants. So for example, this will be the input variant and the button variant of our test component. And what it does is because we combine these two under the same component. Now, if I copy a variant into my design, and if I start designing with it here on the right side, you will see that we have a new kind of like field where we see property one, and then we can select between input and button. And that's because both these variants are under the same component because we combine them as variants and that created this component. So that's why we have this access to kind of like switch between the two. Now, the way we organize this is once you hit combine, you will see that if you click now on the component, you will see here that you have a new panel called properties. And here it will automatically create a property for you, but you can rename this to, for example, type if you would like. And now you have, when you select the variant, you can go here and you will see that the property type has the button and input field. And technically this is how variants are created and how it works. It's as simple as that. But now let me show you a more complex example so you can see what you can actually do with variants and how powerful they can be. If we go to our platform design, what you will see is that I created this variant in which I have all my buttons that I'm using across the project. So for example, these buttons are primary, primary plus icons, fab, secondary, secondary plus icon and secondary fab. So these are all the types. And also I have different states for all these buttons. Now, if I were to, for example, create these components and not use variants, the way it will work is that if, for example, we copy these and we just put them on the side and let's imagine that we've created these components and we do not have the variants, right? Now, every single time I would like to kind of like start designing on a page, I will need to go here and select the button, control C, go here, paste it and be like, ah, uh, maybe I like one with an icon. So I will need to delete this one, go back, go back here, select the one with the icon, zoom out again, go here and it's like, nah, maybe. And you see, this is not a very good user experience because you constantly need to go back and copy and paste the elements so you can use them in your designs. And that doesn't make any sense because it takes you a long time to do that. So if every single time you're adding a new element to a design, you go back to your components and copy pasting those, it's just not efficient. So here is where variants come into play because because I created these variants and I added all these buttons under one component. Now, if I copy just one variant and if I add it to my design, you will see that now if I want to change this button to a different variant, I can just go here on the right panel and just select, okay, maybe I want a secondary button. Maybe I want to have it with an icon or you know what? Maybe I want a fab one or yeah, I can go back to primary. So you can see how easy it is for me now to just change the state of the button, the type of the button in just a few clicks without needing to go back and copy components and just adding them to my designs. This is why variants are so powerful 
Now, let me show you how you can create these. So let's say, for example, let's recreate this so you can understand how these are structured, because this structure that you see here, it's all done by the naming convention that you give your components. So, for example, if you look at this one, you will see that the text is button type equals to primary. Then afterwards, we have a comma. This is like the second property, button variant equals simple, then comma. Then you have the third one, state equals default. So for this one, I have three different properties and they are separated by the comma. So let's recreate this so you can understand how you can structure your variants. If we copy now, let's make a copy of this one here. And let's just copy, for example, let's just copy the first row here. Now what we will do is we can simply just uh, detach all of these from our components. So by right clicking and detach instance, this is how we detach the elements from our main components. So to recreate these variants, what I need to do first is just to transform these into components. So to do that, what I do, I right click on it and I select create component or I can simply go on my keyboard command option K and that will create the component for me. Once I have everything as a component, now what I can do is I can select all of them again, either from my layer panel or just, you know, like selecting the elements on the artboard and then hit here combine as variants. Now the problem is because all the buttons inside have exactly the same name. Figma doesn't know exactly which variant is which because all of them have the same name. So technically for Figma, it's only one button. So here is where you have to pay attention when you create your variants. So now, as you can see, we have two types of buttons. We have a normal button, which has the normal state, the hover state. Sorry, I need to mix them. So this is the normal state. This is the hover state. Then you have the disabled one. And then afterwards underneath, you have another button, which is the button with an icon, and it has these different states. Now, in terms of naming these, what I do know is that I need a property to select between these two. So I have two buttons, one with icon and one without an icon. So that will be a property that I will need to put in my naming. So here in the button, where it says buttons, I will put the first property, which is button type equals, and I will put normal. And then I will take the exact same text and I will go to this one and I will add button type. It will not be normal. This will be with icon. So now if I were to combine only these two variants, so let's just combine these two. If I combine them to variants, now Figma knows that if I copy a variant here, I will have button type and I will have normal and icon. So this is how you differentiate between the two types of buttons. But what's important here is that these buttons need to have the exact same properties. Even if the properties are different, you still need to state that property. So Figma can understand what button are you referring to. So if we go to the next button, which will be our normal button, but with the hover state here, if we just put in state and we say equal hover, then if we combine these two, Figma will be confused in the sense that if I copy this, if I just put it here underneath, if I go here, it still doesn't know because we have two different properties and Figma gets confused. So to structure this, you need to use all these properties across all the variants. So if we undo this again, now what I need to do is to make sure that I have button type to this hover state as well. And then I add the comma. But then what I need to do is to copy this state to the normal button as well. So that Figma knows, okay, these are the normal buttons and these are the different states for those normal buttons. So this one, for example, the state will be normal. And then if we go to the third one, then we need to copy exactly the same thing. And then at state, we add disable. So now if we were to combine all three of them, you'll see that if I just copy this one, you'll see that here I will have button type, which is normal, 
because I don't have another option. We just, we only have normal for now. But on the state one, we have hover and disabled because we defined those. Now to combine these with our icon button, what I need to do is to simply copy this exact same, like the exact same properties that I gave to my uh, first buttons and just add them to the, my second button. But this time the button type is icon, but the state is still normal. So even if we have the state as being normal to both these two types of buttons, Figma will know that this is the normal state for the normal button and this will be the normal state for the icon button. So it will not get confused even if we have the same states because we have another property that differentiates the two variants. Now Figma allows you to have two different types of options. So you either have Boolean which is on and off or you have this kind of like drop down list. So to create the on and off state, the only thing you need to do is when you name your variants, instead of actually using button type equals normal, you need to add on and off instead of normal. So for example, if we say button icon instead of button type, and we say here no, then this will be the toggle when it's off. It will not show you the icon. But what I need to do now is just to make sure, as I previously stated, that all of my buttons now have the exact same naming convention. So now I need to change to all the variants that I have this button type with button no. And then afterwards this one, no. We're gonna keep the states because we're not changing that. We're just, we just want to change the icon to be instead of a drop down to be on and off. So we did this for the first row. Now we need to do the same thing for the second row. So we will do button type on, button type icon no, sorry. But here, instead of no, you're gonna put yes. And it works, by the way, it works the same with on and off as well, as long as it's either on, off, or yes or no. And if you add this to all of them, now, if I just add the last one, now, if I copy this one, I will see that instead of, instead of a drop down like I had previously for my buttons, like my button type, now I have button icon. So now I can just toggle on and off and it will switch between those two variants. So usually on and off it's used when you only have two variants, but if you have multiple buttons like I do here in this example, then for me, it works better if I have a drop down list because obviously I have, you know, button type primary and secondary. Then I have a lot more, you know, like properties that I want to switch between. But on and off is great when you actually design toggle switches or other types of designs and you just want to have like a simple toggle on and off to be like, add this property or remove this property. This can be anything if you can think about it. You can have cards in which you have prices and then afterwards you can remove and add those prices to your design. It can be anything. It's like, trust me, when you're gonna be able to do this with ease, it's gonna be such a game changer in the way you design and in the way you think about design. This is how you can create and use variants in your projects to allow you to design faster and also to switch between button states or any different states with ease. And with this being said, I hope that now you understand how variants work and how you can use them in your future projects. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. And I'm gonna see you pretty soon in the next video. Take care.